Hey everyone, Adam Harry back again with another Bulls Retro Corner View. And today we're taking a look at the fourth and final Index Astartes book. As you can see here, these are uh, books that are collections of articles that originally ran in White Dwarf. They uh, cover various topics about the uh, Astartes, Adeptus Astartes, and their traitor brother in the Heretic Astartes, um, kind of from the lore perspective. And this final book is going to cover the Black Legion, World Bearers Legion, the Salamanders Chapter, the Raven Guard, Alpha Legion, Crimson Fists, Terminators, we got Renegade Space Marine Chapters, and of course, the Space Marine Predator. So if you've uh, joined us for the other previous three videos, this will be the final one for this one. So let's dive on in. Uh, to get started again, these articles, like I mentioned earlier, originally appeared in White Dwarf as a collection. Uh, this book is a collection of those articles. There's a little forward by Gav. Now, we're going to look right first at the Sons of Horus, a.k.a. the future, or the previous, previously, uh, the the pre-heresy version of the Black Legion, is what I was trying to say. So you can see the pre-heresy Luna Wolves, which very eventually became the pre-heresy Sons of Horus, which eventually get turned yet again into the Black Legion. And you can see their, their colors throughout the ages. Now these uh, these formats are all going to be very similar. You're going to look at their origins. You're going to look at their Primarch history. Uh, and depending on whether they stay loyal or turn traitor during the Horus Heresy, you'll get more backstory about that. It's tons of cool art. That was a collection of, of short stories and background info for each one of these chapters. As you can see here, it goes through the whole rundown, what happened with them. It also gets into their homeworld, uh, combat doctrines, organizations, uh, their beliefs, their gene seed, and their battle cry. Uh, and then we that was pretty much all the, of the Sons of Horus slash uh, Luna Wolves slash Black Legion. And now we take a look at Abaddon the Despoiler's backstory and history. His really quick lore rundown. Um, just, I mean, we all know Abaddon. Which, which uh, if you're current with the 40k meta and lore, you know that uh, a lot of this stuff actually got retconned. So he's no longer 0 for 13. <laughs> but those were all secret successes. Next up, we have the uh, the Dark Apostles, aka the Word Bearers. Now, if you're familiar with the Word Bearers, these are the guys that actually kind of kicked off the entire Horus Heresy. Um, I'm not going to get into all of it, but it's basically their fault. Uh, <laughs> they wanted to worship the Emperor. The Emperor said, "Hey, don't worship me like that," and they turned to something else. That something else turned out to be the Chaos Gods, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. Anyway, we get to look at uh, lower uh, info on. Lorgar, their Primarch, and then again, all of their CD history up and through the Horus Heresy. Uh, again, all of the fun stuff, the Homeworld Combat Doctrine, all that good stuff, and yeah, Organization Beliefs, Battle Cry. Next up, we have the Salamanders, and starting off with the Salamanders, uh, of course, their Primarch Vulcan, that goes over their history, uh, Homeworld home of Nocturne, they like to burn things, all that fun stuff. Talks about their uh, kind of their debut in some ways for a lot of folks which was the third war for armageddon where they showed up there to help out uh, alongside like the black templars and that codex so that's kind of the era where this book came into play and we've got uh their different chapter masters and stuff like that uh then we get into the raven claw which is raven claw wow not harry potter we get into the raven guard <laughs> which is the raven guard space marines legion uh again talking talking about their origins with uh, Kobus Kor Korax uh, and their homeworld and all that fun stuff. Just a quick rundown. Their fighting style, of course. They're all about the claws and talons and their battle cry, nevermore. Uh, then we, uh, next up, the next chapter slash Legion is going to be the Alpha Legion, of course. Hey, kind of, you can see how their paint scheme hasn't really changed throughout. Uh, of course, we know them as the masters of subterfuge and deception anyway, so. Maybe those paint schemes are fake, fake anyway. So, all their history and backstory. Again, really cool artwork. Um, these books are great for all of that. And history, their gene seed, kind of like their flaws and some of the fun stuff about their gene seeds. And then we get into the Crimson Fist. Crimson Fist, again, this is actually a second founding chapter. GW did mix in some of the second founding chapters with uh, the, the original... Uh, legions slash chapters. So here we have an offshoot, obviously the Crimson Fist, uh, looking at kind of their backstory, where they came from, R Ren's world, and that what happened to them. And uh, after the heresy, uh, when they became a chapter, after the uh, uh, Stardust came out, all that fun stuff. And then of course the tragedy of Ren's world, where 
they went boom. <laughs> it's still unclear as to what caused that missile to malfunction, but it did, and now the Crimson Fist are battling back from the brink. Uh, we'll talk about Pedro Cantor, and then we get into some uh, other fun stuff. This is a series uh, focusing on a couple of different things that they included in the uh, Index of Stardust here. So this one talks about Tactical Dreadnought Armor, or more commonly known as Terminator Armor. So there's different variations of Terminator Armor, uh, kind of what it what it can do, kind of some of the uh, fun facts, dropping it from orbit uh, to test it to see if there's any flaws, things like that, kind of the weapons it has. Some of the big battles that uh, folks in Terminator Armor fought in, like the Battle for McCrag, uh, the defeat of Angron, I believe that was during the uh, second invasion of Armageddon. So, yeah, it's just kind of a showcase of, of that. And again, this kind of shows you, too, the era this book is from, uh, where they had just released the newish, new new at the time, Terminator kit, compared to the old Terminators who were on the tiny 25mm uh, bases. Uh, they had the new Metal Calgar, uh, the new Captain Lysander, all of those kind of updates. Well, that was the last time we got Terminator updates in 40K. Then we take a look at some of the Renegade Space Marine chapters, and this just kind of goes over, like, not so much the origins of each chapter, but why they would become a rogue renegade chapter to begin with. Uh, one of the focuses here is on the uh, Astral Claws, uh, aka Red Corsairs. I uh, believe that's who they become. Well, yeah, Red Corsairs. They were the Astral Claws. They turned traitor and became Red Corsairs. I don't know if they're really traitor. I mean, they're definitely traitor, but they're just renegades. So they do their own thing. Uh, the Badab Uprising is also a big factor in that. Uh, th their story in particular, with Hurry and Blackheart becoming the Tyrant of Badab and all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, just kind of goes through different things. The Gene Seeds, how they will totally pirate other chapters. Gene Seed Banks and things like that. And then we finally get into the Predator. Oh, uh, the Predator. <laughs> the sort of main battle tank that has totally fallen by the wayside. Uh, but this was a time when the Predators actually did pretty well for themselves. Uh, they pumped out some decent firepower, were hard to, hard to take out themselves, and they could be kitted out for lots of different roles, whether it was uh, anti-vehicle roles or anti-infantry roles, or if you wanted to mix and match, you could do that. Um, yeah, they, I love this page too. Here we have one of those technical readouts, kind of like we saw with the Land Raider and the Adeptus Astartes, Adeptus Astartes uh, number three. But you hear, see here, you have got to, not only the technical readouts, you also have different variations of that, uh, where we've got uh, the Ultramarines kind of paint schemes and white scars and things like that, a Black Templar version as well. So just really cool stuff. And that's pretty much it for this book. As you can see here, we also have the, the Bale Predator for the Blood Angels. So, but yeah, that's the last of the books for the Index of Stardust. Uh, this has been a fun little retro corner trip through the past. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'm Adam here from Bowles. Thanks for watching. Click to subscribe. Check out more videos. And thanks for watching.